y'all welcome to my channel and welcome back if you're one of my bestie boos y'all i deleted my intro I'm so sorry about that so we just gonna jump right on in and we're doing some things for my small business today i'm making labels for my body butters this is the last restock of my body butters for the season i do not ship body butters in the summer and spring because it's too hot in texas <laughs> so i'm showing you my process i get lots of questions on this i print and cut my labels using my Cricut. I designed them on Canva. I upload my designs into Cricut Design Space software. I print them on these vinyl uh, sticker sheets and then I cut them of course on the Cricut and I'm just showing you the process. So after I upload my design as you can see here I use the print and cut feature um when i click print it sends the design to my printer and y'all i don't use a fancy printer this actually was my grandma's printer um and she gave it to me because she doesn't use it and yeah that's what i've been using um after it's printed on the vinyl sticker sheet i put it on my cricut mat and for those of you who are not familiar with the Cricut, this is what you feed your design into the Cricut on so that it can cut it. So this is your cutting mat. Um, I received my Cricut two, maybe three years ago as a Christmas gift from my husband. If you're on the fence about getting one of these for your small business, boo boo, get it. I'm telling you, it's like one of the best additions I could have gotten for my business. Um, and I'm about to print my second set of labels, but baby Addison was like, nah, mama, you're not about to do that without me. So I had to go grab my little coworker. And here we go, my second set of labels. These are my two most popular body butter scents, Cashmere Noir and her. Y'all, these body butters sell out so fast. Now, as you can see, this is what my labels look like once they're cut. They're wraparound labels. Um, this is not regular paper. This is, again, the vinyl sticker paper. So they're very durable. They are waterproof. They are oil proof. They are smudge proof. I've never had any issues with these labels using this particular paper. Um, I get it off of Amazon. I can provide links to it in the description box below. And to place my labels perfectly, I'm using the label ledge. I think it's label ledge or label wizard. That's what it's called. Label wizard. I got this off of Amazon and this will also be linked below. Um, you can adjust it based on the size of your product packaging um, so that it easily allows you to place your labels down straight. And yeah. And I know some of you are going to ask, I don't use any special printer settings. I just whatever the automatic settings are for my printer that's what i use whatever my grandma had a set on when i took it from her a couple years ago that's what i use i don't use anything special and my labels print out perfectly each time so yeah and this is what my babies look like all nicely labeled and ready to go on the shelves um, again, this is my last batch of body butters for the season. So if you're interested in trying my body butters, grab one when the website opens. Now we're going to get into making this soap, y'all. I hauled this soap Black Friday where I purchased it on Black Friday. And I got it in December. Um, and I'm finally getting around to making a test batch. Now usually my test batches are small. But this one is going to be a little bit bigger because um, I don't want the soap to go bad. As you can see, it's really soft. It comes cut in cubes. They used to sell it shredded, but now it's sold in cubes. Um, this is cold processed soap, y'all. It has gone through the saponification process already, and we're rebatching this, making it into a new batch of soap. Um, and you have to do this with fresh cold processed soap, which is why... I'm doing a much bigger batch than I normally would if I was doing a test batch because I've had it since December and it's Friday. I mean, not Friday. What am I talking about? <laughs> and it's February and I don't want the soap to get too hard. So I'm using a stainless steel pot that has been cleaned and sanitized with alcohol. And I have my water already measured off set to the side. And as you can see, I'm pouring the water into the pot. I have the pot set on... Uh, let's see one or two on my hot plate i'm using direct heat y'all a crock pot would be great for this um while i'm letting that soap 
warm up i'm going to measure out my fragrance oil i'm using the oat milk and honey fragrance oil from brambleberry it's really nice and soft and it fits with the theme of this soap which you're going to see in a little bit when i include my additives now um again i think i already mentioned this but a crock pot will be great for this project i don't have one specifically for soap making so i'm using the hot plate with the steel pot um, and I'm just showing you what it's looking like after it's been sitting on the heat for just a few minutes Probably like 10 15 minutes. You want to constantly stir it. You want to babysit this soap so that it does not burn um, You don't want to scorch your soap um, You're going to be tempted to add more water than you need because at first it's going to seem like it's not melting down but give it some time be patient you could put your burner up if you're using direct heat you could put it up to like three if you're literally going to be able to babysit it but i have a small child i have a six month old and i know that i have to stop and you know go tend to her from time to time and so i really wanted to cook it on a low heat and as you can see it's starting to look like mashed potatoes and then you're starting to get like this jelly consistency as well. And that's exactly what you're looking for, okay? Um, I do eventually go in and add the other half of the water that I measured out. And you wanna be careful not to add too much water because it will melt down. And here we go, this jelly mashed potato consistency. This is exactly what you're looking for this soap is ready if you don't want to do anything else to it you can at this point go ahead and put it in the mold but i'm going to add a couple of additives to my soap because this is going to be a honey and oat soap so here's my first additive i'm going to use honey powder which i got from formulator sample shop um, this is a humectant, it moisturizes the skin, has great properties, healing properties for the skin. So I'm adding that in. And then next I'm gonna add colloidal oatmeal, which also has moisturizing, hydrating properties, and it also um, functions as a skin soothener, soothes the skin from irritation and things of that nature. And then you just wanna mix it in, okay? Just mix it in. Now, in hindsight, what I wish I would have done differently is I wish I would have dissolved the colloidal oatmeal and the honey powder in water. These are both water soluble additives. And so the next time I make this soap, which will be today, <laughs> I'm going to dissolve uh, the additives in the water first and then add it into the soap that way. So that um, I don't have to work as hard to disperse all of those additives those dry additives in the soap because they clumped up yeah and it, i had to put a lot of elbow grease into to smoothing that uh, soap mixture out with those powders so that i will not do again but here we are just mixing it in all right and now i'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance oil in and before i added my fragrance oil i did turn my heat down let the soap cool just a little bit um i did not take it off of the heat when i mixed in my fragrance oil because i wanted the soap to stay pretty soft um this soap starts to harden up as soon as it starts to cool. Like as soon as it starts to cool, this is not like Melvin Pour soap at all. You don't have a lot of time to work with it. Um, once it starts to cool, that's it. She starts to get hard, she starts to firm up, and that's what you got to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just scoop it into the mold. I'm using a tall and skinny mold from Brambleberry. I really like this mold. Um, it was easy to work with, um, pretty sturdy. I like it, I recommend. Um, and as you can see, I'm just literally using my spatula to fill in that mold. By this time, my baby was raising all kind of hell. <laughs> she was not for it. She did not want mommy to be away in this room. So I was like panicking. I was rushing, y'all. I was rushing trying to get this soap in the mold so that I could go attend to my baby. Um, so this is what you're seeing right now. Like just trying to get it all in there. I wish I wouldn't have had to rush. I wish I would have been able to just kind of zone out and be 
you know, in a, in a, in a zone while doing this, because, um, I think I would have been able to get it in the mold a lot better. Um, but because I was rushing, I wasn't able to like tap it down and kind of get some of those, get as many of those air bubbles out as I wanted to. And you'll see that in a minute, once I demold the soap, that it wasn't as smooth. And again, this is cold process soap that we're reheating through a hot process. So it's going to look rustic. It's not gonna be smooth and flowy like cold process soap. Um, so you should expect this soap to have a rustic look to it, which I don't mind at all. Um, I actually like it. I think it gives it some character. But you can also, while it's at its hottest, you're also able to get it into the mold and get it quite smooth. I've seen some YouTube videos where um, makers were able to get that cold process soap quite smooth in the mold. Now the tops are not gonna be all swirly and interesting, um, but you know, the sides of the mold, you can, you can get them smoother. And so as you're putting the soap in, you wanna make sure that you are banging it up against the table, um, cause you wanna even it out you know, and get as many air bubbles out as possible so that you can get a nice smooth cut. And so here we are, we done. We're gonna set it to the side and I allowed this soap to set um, overnight. So let's unbox my soap cutter. I got this soap cutter, Black Friday as well. It was on sale. I got it on Amazon. If you're interested, I will put a link to it in the description box below. Cannot remember how much I paid for it, although I do know it was not super expensive. It was very reasonably priced. Um, it was on sale, but the regular price was reasonably priced. So as you can see, these are the pieces that come with it. It already has um, the guitar wire, that will cut the soap attached to it. You get this little measuring block right here and then you get some extra wires and you get like a little wrench, um, a little tool. And this is the base of the soap cutter right here. This is the base. And what you can't see is that there is a ruler on the side over there so that you can measure the size that you want your bar to be cut at and you can set that. Now it did not come with instructions so I had to go back to Amazon to look at some pictures, to look at the diagram, to see how to put it together, to make sure I put it together correctly. And they, they actually have the instructions on how to put it together there. It was really easy to put together, didn't have any problems. Um, as you can see, just slide the little bolt through, screw on that little bolt and bam, there we go, we able to cut. And the tighter you um, put that screw, the tighter the the hinge is on the, the cutting mechanism. And then here, this is a little block that I'm putting on, which I use to determine the width of my soap bars. As you can see, I'm using the little ruler on the side to set it in place. And then once you pick the size of your bars, then you just use that little screw there to secure it in place. And bam, there you go. Very easy to put together, no problems at all. Um, I do wanna say that this tool is only to be used for cold process soap. It will not work for melt and pour soap because melt and pour soap is too hard, okay? So here is our soap. So what I did is spray the top with some mica, some gold mica and with a little bit of glitter in it. You can't really see on the camera, the camera doesn't really do it justice, but it's actually really pretty, it's very, um, vibrant, very shimmery, um, has lots of luster to it. So it's really, really pretty. And here we are, the big reveal, unmolding. So when you use this particular um, rebatch soap, it recommends that you allow the soap to sit in the mold for one to two days before you unmold it. I found that um, one day was enough. I was able to get the soap out fine with no problems. Um, and here it is. As you can see, it has some texture along the sides, which again is expected because this is a rebatch soap, which is um, gone through high process. And if you are familiar with high process soaps, then you know that they come out looking just like this. So yeah, here is the soap log. At first I was like, eh, know about this I don't know how I feel about it but I'm gonna make it pretty y'all and I'm gonna show y'all so stick around I'm gonna show you guys how I make this soap look super cute 
so yeah I like the texture it's interesting all right so let's go ahead and test out this soap cutter see how it performs now i recommend that if your soaps have things on top of them whether you put botanicals on top of your flowers glitter um embeds or mica like i did i recommend you turn the tops facing you and you cut it from the side just to keep from having all that stuff run down the side of your soap if that makes sense so here's the first cut y'all look at it look at it look, hold on let me move it out the way so y'all can see look at that it's cute right much better than i thought it would come out but i'm not finished yet y'all stick around because i'm gonna show you again how i'm gonna make it cute but look y'all was so proud of myself i was so proud of myself i'm gonna do another cut so that you guys can see yes come on cut so i am going to be offering soaps on my website this soap came out great i've been i mean it needs to cure for about two weeks so all the water can evaporate out that i added to it um so it has a really quick turnaround but i will be adding these to my website i've been using it like the little scraps i've been using it on my hands and stuff it's very moisturizing um smells really good it's nice and light um i didn't put too much fragrance oil because i want this to be a nice mild um gentle soap i'm very happy with the way it came out now once again this is my test batch so i'm using it my family is using it we have been using it um, everybody likes it so far my daughter really likes the soap look at it it's cute right there we go it has lots of character so yeah i'm gonna make another batch um because this one i learned from and so i'm gonna make another batch changing up my process um based on the things that i learned from this go around so that my next batch will be better. I need to use up all of this soap before it gets too hard for me to rebatch. So yeah. And so, oh yeah, I'm just letting this go, not telling y'all what's going on. So I'm using a vegetable peeler, just a regular, regular vegetable peeler. And I'm using that to bevel the sides of my soap just to make it look neater and more put together. What do you guys think? I think that definitely makes it look cuter <laughs> it makes it look a little bit better what do you guys think i think it makes a big difference so i'm going to show you guys the process again i'm just taking that vegetable pillar and i'm going along all the edges of the soap just to smooth them out makes it feel more ergonomically friendly in the hands like the rounded edges it just makes it easier more comfortable to wrap your hands around the bar of soap there we go yes and by this time i'm like beveling the soap and i'm just so proud of myself i'm like man look at this now if you're interested in my process my measurements for this particular soap um and any of my feedback if you want all the measurements and everything check out my patreon i will be uploading step-by-step -step process for this there for my patrons so yeah check that out i will have a link to my patreon in the description box below as well all right last thing i'm showing y'all for this soap is a stamp so i wanted to figure out how to brand or personalize my soap and i got this off of amazon now this one i got is a little cheap it's a little stamp is used for pastries it's not the best it's not the best but um i just wanted to try it out it was very very cheap i think like three or four dollars um i'm gonna get another one i don't completely recommend this one yet so i'm not going to put this in the description box because i'm not 100 percent happy with it i feel like i can get one better quality but i'm just you know testing things out and so i'm gonna use this mallet here and i am stamping the soap I plan on getting me a custom soap stamp made, but until then, this is gonna work because it's inexpensive, it's affordable, fits my budget, and it's, it's cute, it's cute. I just need to get a better quality one. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit. Two things, one, because of the design of this particular stamp, as you can see, it came out cute. That S is a little, 
I don't know. The S ain't S in the way I wanted to for 16. Like it's kind of like at an angle. Y'all see that? But it's still cute, right? It's handmade. It has some charm to it. So I'm not completely mad at it. So this is a completed beveled soap with the stamp in it. I'm not mad at it. I think it looks nice. It's nice and rustic. It has handmade charm. So I'm happy with it. Um, these are my samples that I'm going to give out and my packages and yeah that's it y'all that's it that's all what do y'all think if you found this helpful please subscribe thank y'all so much for watching and i'll see y'all in my next video deuces be blessed